All right, Yaku, come on up. It's a privilege of ours to have a brother in the Lord and someone here who's come with a message upon his heart that is both timely and relevant. He's produced movies, he's an international speaker, and he sits on a half dozen or more uh, anti-human trafficking boards, international ministries throughout the United States and the world. So let's give Yaku Buyans a big East Texas welcome. Um, first off, I love YWAM, and I was introduced to YWAM in 2009, and uh, I want my kids to know YWAM. They're little ones, though. They're six, four, and one and a half, but they know Jesus, so uh, thanks, Randy. Randy's been a dear friend, a very good friend, and uh, love you, and thank you, Matt, and thank you for your trip to the border with your team. And just always, <clears throat> Lauren Cunningham, Cunningham is a friend, and I will send a message tomorrow just to let him know, hey, Tyler is on fire. The rest of the country better keep up. Uh, yeah. They better keep up. Or maybe we'll tell David Cunningham, hey, you need to come down here and see what him drink the Kool-Aid down here in Texas. <laughs> they get too comfortable in Kona. Um, they're locked up in Kona. So, look, I am the wrong guy at the wrong time for the right reason. Uh, I am the po politically the most incorrect person you'll ever meet in your life because I frankly just don't give it my dear. <laughs> I just don't. It is kingdom from morning until night. It is one kingdom, one king, hands, feet, eyes, ears, but there's one kingdom. There's no Baptist kingdom, Pentecostal kingdom, it's one king, and until we not serve one king, one head, and where the head goes, the body goes, by the way. That's a fact of life. I played professional, this is not important, but I played professional sport for a long time. And when you're a wide receiver, we very well know, you may or may not know this, but when you line up on that line and you look at the defensive back in front of you, many, many really good players will say, I watch his hips. But the really excellent players will say, I watch his head. Because all I need to do is tap his head, not head or punch. In momentum, all I need to do with you is just nudge your head, and your body will go in that direction. It's inevitable. You cannot avoid it. Absolutely unavoidable. No matter how strong your core is, your legs, your body, if you move the head, the body goes. Unfortunately, we've detached from the head in the church. We've detached from the head. So the head is moving and then the body stays still. And that's a problem. That is how sex trafficking infiltrates the United States. That's how the USA is the number one nation on earth. Yes, I'm from South Africa. Ex Afrikaans Bursian, 100%. Okay? And we have trafficking in South Africa and in Cambodia and the Philippines and in, in, in Kenya and in India. But the United States of America is the number one nation on earth commercializing sex with children. That is a fact. The number one nation on earth. Dallas, Texas today is the number one city in the number one nation on earth commercializing sex with children. The most conservative, Bible Belt, Republic of Texas, the pride has detached from the head. Because the head will never move, in a, the head being God, will never move in a direction where you can look at a child and say, that's a commodity. Where you look at any human life and say, that's a commodity. The head will never move in that direction. No, he moves towards restoration and honor and rebuilding and covering the naked prostitute in the street. That's what the head does. So whenever we look at issues in our nation today, and yes, for the South Africans in the room, there's a couple that are older than me. Indrach Makmach is old school for sure. I served there. I served. I had to. It was mandatory. Military service was mandatory. As you know, you served. I don't even have to ask you because you didn't have a choice. 
I wish for the moment for American men, and I'm not calling you out, brother. I'm calling you up to connect to the head. For American men to come back into your, in, in, back into your rightful place as a hunter, as, a, as an unneutered, yes, I said it, unneutered son of God that wakes up in the morning and asks one question, where is the land of the giants? Because I'm slaying giants today. Show me God. That you're not the man where he says, i got to send a fish to swallow you, to get you to the city, because you're detached from my will. Maybe I'm preaching to the choir. I stared out that window. There's a tree over there. It's called Twin Oaks. I, I'm assuming it's an oak tree. I don't even know what kind of a tree it is. But there's a tree over there. And God just captivated me through worship with that tree. He said, I want you to look at this tree. I bring water to the tree. This tree is not even by the river. I bring water. That tree is no concern. It knows it's a tree. It behaves like a tree. I took a picture just to remind people it looks like a tree. It does what it's supposed to do as it's created by its creator. It doesn't question. It doesn't get concerned to say, well, what about all the trees at the river? Surely they got it better than me. He goes, no, it's pretty healthy. Walk out and go look at that tree. Where are my sons that will plant themselves in a community like an oak? That will say, I'm going to grow roots that's going to go under that building. You move that tree, that building goes down. Guarantee you. Where are the men in my communities that will grow roots? The Ezekiel 33 men that will say, I'm a watchman on the wall. I'm going to warn you of all the evil in this city, and we're going to hunt it down. We're going to eradicate it from our midst. We're going to bring the love of Jesus, bring the restoration, bring the comfort and the peace and the healing. But we're going to grow roots, and we're going to take the ground back so that nothing moves in this city unless it's built on our roots you want to come into our city, into our state from California? You want to bring comprehensive sex ed into the classroom in Texas? Let me tell you, you're going to build upon our foundation, which is His foundation. So when we want to move you, we move you. But we haven't done that. We've built the church on their foundation. We've built our hope on a White House We've set our faith and our trust in a government structure. We've forfeited our rights as sons of God. You want to have any, I would debate anybody because it's not me debating. Listen, hear me today. There's not a single conversation in this country today that's going in the right direction. The race conversation, it's going in the wrong direction. The family conversation, the wrong direction. The gender conversation, the wrong, and it's two, by the way, two. The sex com it's all going in the wrong direction because it's built on systems not built by the head. So Christians are building upon a foundation they don't own so the foundation can move us wherever it wills. These things don't just happen, people. They happen when things happen to you. You cannot grow in the kingdom of God without massive, hear me, not understated or overstated, just fact, massive trial in your life. Iron sharpens iron. You forge gold in a fire. I'm from Africa for crying out loud. You want to know how a diamond is made? Pressure. Enormous pressure. Pressure. Christians want to walk on this planet with no pressure, no fire, no refinement, no lion's den. And he goes, can you just come into the den with me so I can show you that I will shut the mouths of the lions so that when you walk out of this place, you are infinitely stronger than when you walked in because I actually have giants for you to go slay. But I won't sacrifice you if you're not ready. So this is YWAM. 
Hey, YWAM, you go to the nations. You better go through fire. Because you're not going to South Africa to go to South Africa. You're going to South Africa because there's giants in that land to slay. Because the people of that land aren't slaying them. Because the government of that land are not slaying them. So he's satellite importing you from Tyler, Texas to say, you go spy on the land. And you better be one of the two that comes back and says, we can take them. You have a choice to make. Either atrocities are okay or they're not. And it's a simple choice. Ask dad. People ask me all the time, and I'll give you numbers. Yes, for sure. I'll give you numbers. People, Yaku, what are the numbers? Okay, 79,000 kids are sex trafficked in the state of Texas every day. 79,000. But let me tell you what the head says about that. I will leave everybody to go find one. So by when do we need to storm the gates? If there's one. Because what number is enough? Does it need to be a million a day? When does the switch flip on? At one. It flips on at one. But we would be absolute hypocrites if we sit in this room and say, we're going to go fight sex trafficking out there. And to the team that's going to South Africa, I'll challenge you, do not get on that airplane. If you can't answer this question, because you're wasting time, you're wasting resource, and you're kidding yourself, and we waste resource in the kingdom. We love to be busy. So my question to you is this, the South Africa team and this whole room, and again, if I've got to fight my way out through that door to get home to my kids tonight, I'm willing to do it. I'm not here to make friends. Don't let the glasses fool you. We can put it down, and then we can just go all night long. Okay? I wear them because my wife likes them. I'd rather be fight ready all the time. But I'll fight my way out of here if you can get one thing. And this is the question you ask yourself. This minute, and I told the team back there, are you part of the problem? Until you're not big enough in the kingdom, until God is not big enough in your life for you to face that question to be audacious enough to ask that question, you're not ready to go help a single person out there. Do not get on the airplane. Are you part of the problem? No, Yaku, of course not. I'm not sex trafficking. Any Are you sure? Are you sure? When you drink a coffee, you can say, I bought it from Starbucks. Is that where the chain starts? Or does it start with the farmer way, 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 way back when in Guatemala who planted a seed? Isn't that a whole chain? Isn't it the supply chain? Are you in the supply chain? Then you're part of the problem. So let me paint a picture for you. You understand a train track doesn't bend and just, you don't take an off-ramp. Right? Train tracks... Sex trafficking is train stop number 57, where children are being raped. What's stop number one? That's my question. What puts me on the track? Because I don't want to be on that track. And tonight I'm asking you, are you on the track? Because if you are, we got to get off tonight. Tonight. I'll stay here until midnight. I don't care. But tonight, this has to happen. Pornography is the first on-ramp onto that track. That is a fact. Can't argue it. Yaku, there's no porn in the church. No, only 62% self-proclaimed millennials in the church say they watch porn. Only 62. That is as naive as to say there's no divorce in the church. Oh, only 55%. There's no abortion in the church. You don't want to know the number. As a matter of fact, we signed the bill into play. The Christians did. 60% of that school board 
of judges that voted for Roe v. Wade in Dallas, Texas, self-proclaimed as Christians. The, the church voted abortion into this country. Let's just talk facts tonight. There's not a politician with a not chutzpah. I could say another word, which I would always also say if it was just men, that would face these things for what they really are. I ask God, God, why is abortion out of control in this country? Why is Planned Parenthood the third largest organization from funding? Why is sex trafficking in this country so pre? Why, 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 why? And he said, Yaku, can you steal from me? I said, no, of course not. I can't steal from you. He said, so why do you be believe that, that the world can steal from me? I own the cattle on the hills, but I own the hills also. It's all mine. If you see anything that's in the enemy's camp today, Hollywood, stock market, sex trafficking, life in the womb, anything that's in the enemy's camp was not stolen from God. It was forfeited by his sons and daughters. So anything you see that you think evil has its hands on it, Christians gave it up. Or throw the book out the window. It's either true cover to cover Genesis 1 to the last period in Revelation or it's all a lie. This cherry picking church culture in our country where we pick scripture to satisfy our desire is nonsense. He is the king. Life matters. He creates with purpose. Nothing just happens. As parents, we are so honored to be chosen to steward a child, but we're not the creators. There's value in every life. Forget about the skin tone for crying out loud. We're his children. And where are the men and the women that will stand for that? That will say, Yaku, whoa, if, if I watch porn, I'm part of sex trafficking? Yes, you're creating demand. You're creating demand because you're a buyer. You're creating demand for women to be exploited, men to be exploited. Yaku, but this doesn't harm anybody, really. Have you spoken to porn actresses? Because I have. Have you faced pedophiles in the eye? Have you faced sex traffic victims in the eye? Have you had countless encounters with these people? Have you heard that every woman in porn said it was take 57 because it's a movie? None of it is real. You cannot reenact it. There's not a wife in this building that will give her husband sex ten times a day. Not one. What about every day? What about every day for six months? What about every day for six years? If you're a wife that's willing to do that, raise your hand. Now that would kind of be abuse, Yaku. Oh, because... The average age of child traffic victims in our country are 12, and they get sold 10 to 25 times per day. So at what point does the woke culture actually stand for what they believe in, that life has value? Life doesn't have value. It's all rhetoric. It's all nonsense. Unless you come back to the place where you say, no, life has value. To them, it doesn't. Do you know that we have more policies written today to protect pedophilia than to fight against it? You're talking about human beings, sons and daughters of God, that says we can write a law that's above His law. And through the law, we'll justify it so it's okay. We're going to write a law that says we should teach kindergartners about masturbation. 27 states in the United States. In kindergarten, in the classroom, we're going to make it legal. Making it legal doesn't make it right. Somewhere along the line, they've lost their way. There is no representation in all the parties, blue, red, Libertarian, they've lost their way to represent the true will of the people that at one point was the will of God. So they were representing the will of God by representing the people. It's now back to the people. Well, is it the people in the masses? No, it's back to the family. This is the hour where this nation needs to get small and focused.
to get big again. I challenge YWAM to get small. Not small-minded, but small and intimate. Small group going to South Africa. Intimate. Get to know one another. Really get to know one another. Pour into one another. Fellowship. Forge relationship in fire. Build trust. Husbands, tonight, go back to your wife. Bring truth into that marriage. Wives, forgive. Forgive. I know your brain can connect everything to everything from 1962. (laughs) I know God gave you that ability to reach back into... 14 months ago into today's argument and say, oh, remember when you did that? And the guy goes, what are you talking about, woman? Because he created us to be compartmentalized so we can actually move. He created you to cover our six, to cover the blind spots. This is why he said helpmate, equal, to become one. The family is under attack in our nation. Sex trafficking is out of control because we don't have family. Maybe you do. I didn't. I was raised by a single mom. Yes, for those of you who know our story, my sister was sex trafficked for six years in South Africa. It's going to fall on the family to fix these things. Talk to me about your church, your pastor. He speaks to you directly. We commune in a family in the church because he tells us we are stronger in numbers. But your manna better not come from your church. Your manna better not come from a pastor. It better come from him directly. Because that's how he spoke to his son. Otherwise, he would have spoken to the disciples to inform Jesus. Hey, can you tell my son um, I kind of have a plan for him today? to go sit by the well and tell the women, I'll give you water that you'll never throw. No, he spoke to him directly. And what happened when he left? He said, now you boys go do greater work than you saw me do. Where's that in the church today? So what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, four of us walking down the street here in Tyler and our shadows fall on a homeless guy and he's healed? Our shadow. Yaku, no, come on. Yes, come on. Or the book is a lie. In the story, how do you fight sex trafficking? Dads, take your family back. For the marriage in this room, and there are many that are struggling right now, go to war for your family. Go contend for your bride. Go hunt. Wake up, sleeping man who've been emasculated in the United States, whose faith is under a pillow, who asks permission to hunt, and go hunt. This is why I love Africa. There's everything, but there's nothing. There's function and dysfunction. And when you go back and you become tribal again, That dad has no concern that when he leaves for the field for a week, for two weeks, to bring a deer back, he's got no concern whether the home will still be there. He knows that woman can do it all. And he's confident enough that it's okay for her to be able to do it all, to be independent of him but dependent of the father. He doesn't need to. Sexually, sexually compromise the woman to put her under his thumb. Nor does she have to tell him, you're not a man, you can't go hunt. Yaku, we're hunting for our food here. Maybe we should. You don't just hunt food, you hunt evil. You hunt evil. I can inform you with information. Yes, the number one form of sex trafficking in America today is not throwing a kid in a wagon. Under 1% are kidnappings. So how does it happen, Yaku? Well, before I get to the number one place, let's talk about the border for a second. And hey, I'll you the wrong way politically. I started this conversation by telling you I'm politically incorrect. 
Let me talk about notion, context, okay? When a leader of this nation says the following, we promise that we'll keep every child safe that's coming across the border, and we're going to give them a safe family. That is by design a lie. Yaku, how can you say that? Why don't we go, why don't we line up the first 10,000 foster children we can find tomorrow? Come on. Challenge me on anything. Let's go line up randomly the next 10,000 foster children we can find tomorrow and ask them, are you safe? Do you feel safe? Are you with a safe family? Some will say yes. Do you know that 65% of foster kids in America today have been sexually abused? Do you know that the average foster kid in America today moves 10.4 times every 24 months? That's 10 fathers every 24 months. When we find them, they can't even remember which guy raped them first. But our leadership says we can bring kids from other nations and guarantee them a safe passage and a safe place. It is absolute nonsense. That's not political. It's just not true. We are having a very hard time taking care of America's children. We're having a very hard time protecting them in the classroom against crazy, woke propaganda and agenda. Teaching them sex in the classroom. Comprehensive sex ed is destroying this nation. It's grooming children in the classroom. It is literally taking America's kids and putting them on a platter for a, for a pedophile and the pimp. Actually, the classroom has become the pimp because the pimp's job is to groom and connect. Groom, indoctrinate, and connect. Don't need a pimp today. You need social media in the classroom. The kids are self-exploiting. They're connecting directly with the buyer. Today, the number one form of trafficking in our country is what's called familial trafficking. This is a family member or someone they trust who they are familiar with trafficking them. Well, Yaku, where are all these kids, you know, in cages and what? They're sleeping at home at night. You think it's hard to fight an evil in Felucia or Rwanda? How about fighting an evil on your street that you can't see, that is functionally dysfunctional in this country? The softball team. Your friend, but her father, comes in her room at night and then he invites his friends to the party. Oh, Yaku, that's not happening. You, the number I gave you of 79,000 in Texas, that's a number with 1% of the crime reported. We have 300 kids under the age of 15 per night walking the streets of Dallas, none of them homeless. Most of them have families. They're working. We've seen everybody arrested from the janitor to the school principal, the sitting state U.S. senator, all the way to the billionaire Epstein. It is permeated society. Why? Because it's sex, people. Raise your hand. Please. Please, I want to meet you. I'm looking for this person. I've been looking for a long time. Raise your hand if you did not come out of the womb of a woman. <laughs> I've gone around the world and nobody, I've not met a single person to raise their hand. Let's start there with the conversation about gender. Women and men are the same. Then please raise your hand if you came out of the womb of a man. Hadn't happened yet. Will not happen. We can't buy into these lies because it moves, it disconnects you from the head. And you create a false head that is rudderless. And all of a sudden, you look the other way when people start talking about child rape. And the bad guy says, thank you for the territory. Thank you, Christian, for forfeiting more ground. Appreciate it very much. Surely they won't come into our community. This is an upstanding community. This is 
middle class income or upper class income. Nobody will come do that here. There is no safer place today to than Highland Park, Texas. We have 13 cases at the moment in Highland Park, Texas. The problem is when you tell Highland Park, Texas, they say, you're crazy. So I've now resorted to this. If I tell you there's an evil in your community because we have proof and you say no, then you're part of the problem. So then we turn our sights on you. Because you must be hiding something. Sin must have gotten such a hold of your sexuality that you want to cover it. Write laws around it. Bring it into the classroom. This is the fact. Name the politician. Please, again, name the politician that has had this conversation in a debate. Name it. Name, name the one debate in a pre presidential race where this question came up about sexual indoctrination in our kids' classrooms, about familial trafficking. You can't name them because they're not in the business to slay giants. They're in the business to tolerate giants, to play nice with giants, to forfeit territory to the giants, sometimes under the name of Christ. And I'm telling you, the head I serve does not play that way. His adversary comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to set free and liberate and bring life abundantly. So in your life, where are you potentially contributing to the problem? Is lust a factor? Is porn a factor? Are you sitting with a deeply rooted heart hurt because of what someone has done to you and you're absolutely convinced no one will allow you to look them in the eye and speak the truth? You're not trustworthy. Why do you think in, since 1994 I've never met a single victim, not one, that self-identified as a victim? Not one. Because they truly don't know. Because somewhere in the abuse, they bought into either this is love, or I'm protecting my family, this is my worth, I'm contributing to this family as dysfunctional as it is. Let me give you a news flash today. I don't care if your name is Tom Brady, an NFL lion, the toughest Navy SEAL from SEAL Team 6, the President of the United States, any human being can be severely manipulated by someone with skill. Call it whatever you want. MK Ultra, brain control, brainwashing, whatever. To those who have experienced it, they will tell you it is so real. This is why the Lord says, pray that the scales will be removed from their eyes. You have to tell a victim you're a victim, and they'll fight you on it. They'll get on a witness stand and defend the guy that just bounced their head off the wall. They'll tell the judge, it wasn't him, it was me. They'll run away from the safe home after they're rescued, back to the pimp. Why? Because of a belief system. Because they're disconnected in that moment from the head, the Father, the Father's love for them, His purpose for them, His design for them, and they follow a different head. We got crazy laws in this country. You got statutory rape, 17 and under, federal. Then you got sex trafficking laws now in all 50 states of the United States, 17 and under as a victim which means I don't have to prove force, fraud, or coercion. She's a victim. He's a victim. Then you got states like California saying, sure, we have those laws, but now we're going to write a law called State Bill 145, and we're going to say, we're going to create a 10-year gap for a pedophile. So if a 25-year-old rapes a 16-year-old, she's not a victim. A judge can decide whether it was consensual or not. Forget about statutory rape. Forget about the sex trafficking law. We'll just write a new law. And we're justifying abusing children. Yeah, this is real. I can go on. You'll pass out on the floor and we won't stop. I can go forever. I can tell you what's happening in Texas, in Michigan, every state. The laws they're writing. 
sick stuff. I can tell you about little Caleb, 12 years old, porn addict. Two hours of porn a week. How did that happen? Caleb was sitting in a classroom. A teacher in the classroom asked him, hey, Caleb, um, because it's in the curriculum called It's Perfectly Normal, which it's not. Caleb, does anal sex hurt? Caleb's 10. He's never even heard of it. Married couples can't even answer this question, can't even deal with this. Caleb goes home. He Googles anal sex. He pulls it up on YouTube, gets hooked on porn that night. Thank you very much, school system, for grooming Caleb. Caleb then starts searching. All the predators online go, there you are, Caleb. You're ready. You're primed. You're groomed. You're indoctrinated. They engage, and all of a sudden now you've got an absolute debacle of two years of this kid's life. Now you've got to deal with rape and sodomy. Now you've got to deal with him abusing other children. Now it's going to take you 30 years to unpack this kid's life. But we're woke. The church has a responsibility. Get connected with the head and go where it sends you. Now. Now. There's a harvest that is ready. People have never, maybe in Sodom and Gomorrah's time, maybe, 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 because the stuff I see is worse than what I read. The harvest is ready, YWAM. And it's here. It's there, Africa, but it's here. By number, it's in this room. That's just a fact. There are men in this room tonight that tonight can get a piece back that they gave away. I asked God for one word for this group tonight. And he said, Yaku, tell them. And, and whether you believe me or not is so irrelevant. You'll see. And if you won't serve him, he says the rocks will cry out. May we not be the nation where he needs to get praise from the rock. May his sons and daughters say, you can't shut us up if you try, God. I'm going to challenge you, God, to listen to me long enough giving you praise. And he can't leave you. But there are men in this room tonight. And the Lord said, tell them I want to give them a peace back. I want to make them whole. I want to restore them. And it's on you to go to him and go dig. Really dig. When last did you pray until blood came out of your pores? You want to know what I'm asking of you tonight? I'm going to disrupt your life tonight. And I'm proud of it. Because if you wake up tomorrow morning, the same person you woke up today, you're lazy. You're choosing to disconnect from the head. It is work. We don't, we don't get saved by works, but we work hard to get refined. Why? To go to a new frontier, a new battlefront, a new giant. Or we get comfortable in the land of familiar and we slay the same giants we've been saying for 10 years. Here it comes again. Lust comes again. Here comes to staying with my wife again. I avoided it four years this time. Maybe next time I'll avoid it five years. I don't serve that God. Maybe you do. Your pastor preaches that. If a Christian comes to me, Christian meaning a follower of Jesus Christ, not a tag you put on, an accusation. When last did someone accuse you of being a Christian? I want to be accused. They accuse those boys. Hey, hey, you come here. We're going to crucify you. You're with him. No, 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 I'm not. No, I'm not. Yes, you are, because we've watched your lifestyle. We've heard you speak. So tonight, he wants to give you a piece back. But this is how this transaction works. You've got to go to him first. Men, you've got to ask him, what have I given away? Show me. Not do you know, you don't know. I want a revelation in your life. I want a cataclysmic explosion in your life tonight. A newfound revelation with the Lord. As, as beautifully silver-haired and wise you are, a new encounter.
new lifeblood. Where did I give what away? Show me. And he will. And then you go to war. For the woman, he wants to give you a piece back. Same thing. There are women in this more than you want to know that have been sexually abused. Not just one that self-proclaimed it, but more. You can hold on to that. And I want you to see a bungee cord tied to your back with an anchor, not a chain. That's the beautiful thing about when you're a Christian, your chains, break the chains, break the chains. Sorry, Randy. I know we write those songs and we sing them. I'm done with break the chains. Break the chains is for the lost. The second you accept Jesus, Satan goes, okay, I'll swap your chain for a bungee cord. I'll give you more room. I'll give you more distance. I'll let you disciple 10 people. I'll, I'll let you walk into territory where you haven't gone before because it's going to make you feel good. And I know you'll get comfortable. And when you get close to the end, you'll feel a bit of a pull and you'll naturally back up a little bit. But we're free, right? That's not freedom. I'm talking to freedom that there's nothing on earth that holds you back. There's nothing in hell that holds you back. There's nothing that holds you back from having the greatest marriage, the greatest relationships, the greatest business, the greatest financial blessing. And no, this is not a prosperity gospel. It's just a gospel. He owns the cattle on the hills and the hills. So when I see a ministry or something struggling, I go, cut the bungee cords. Many don't want to because... It's too free. Now what? Now he's going to expect me to really go. Like I've got no excuse. God, sorry. I, I can go halfway to Nineveh. But this is how far as my rope lets me go. Holding on to sexual immorality, abuse, shame, blame, self-condemnation. It's a bungee cord. It gives you leeway and you think you're there. He wants more for you. He wants to liberate you tonight. Woman, woman, good night. There is nothing on earth more precious than a woman who puts Jesus first. There is nothing more beautiful than that. If you're a husband and you're not there yet, you want her to love him more than she loves you. You want her to literally look at you or flat out number two. It's not even close it's not even close. You're allowed to ask who's number one. But when that answer is Jesus, you champion that woman. You tell her, woman of God, go, go. What is he saying to you? Speak it into our family. Proclaim it over our children. Speak it over the grandchildren. But go, woman, at your amazing age. New territory, new ground. Otherwise, please do me a favor and die tonight and go to heaven. <laughs> You're saved, right? You might as well go. Why are you here if you're saved? Please answer. If it's not for those who don't know him yet. So you didn't wake up this morning for your husband if he's saved. I have scriptural precedent for that. Jesus, yeah, what's up? Your mom and your brothers are here. Um, who's my mom and my brothers? Mary, the only ever virgin. Um, they know me. I'm here for these people who don't. You go there. He's going to teleport you to places. You can't fathom what he's going to do. But we've got to cut the bungee cords, people. The shame, the bitterness, the anger, the resentment, the conversation you've been trying to have with your family for nine years and you just can't get there. And you say, Lord, just bless them. Lord, bless them. But it's still there. Cut the cancer 
out. Not even for them, for you to move, to move, to really move. I want this YWAM campus to see arms grow back that was severed with machetes in Africa. I want this campus to see the blind see, the lame walk. I want to see marriages restored through you. Where you go, you can't, I can't. People will dance up here and say, I, I got to tell you how amazing this woman is. Divorce papers were signed. I was out of my mind. Is that possible in the kingdom? So you want to really fight sex trafficking? Fight for family. Bring fathers home. You see a black American, African American, I'm African American. No disrespect to our black brothers in the room, sister. I'm African American. If you say you're African American, show me your African passport and your American passport, because I can. You're just black American. It's a skin pigment for crying out loud. It's not who you are. What are we talking about in this country? We teach racism in places where it doesn't exist because you control people by it. You divide and conquer people through it. Sun Tzu, not a believer, but very smart. Must have heard from God, just like Watchman Nee in the prison. Sun Tzu says the following. If you have, want to make war with you, you don't fight her. You get someone else to fight her, and you take the spoils. Is that not happening? Are they not pinning husbands against wives, children against fathers in this country? Are they not changing language in this country? For the infighting and the believer to come take the spoils. What is the spoil? Oh, your school board. Your state education system. Your freedom. Your God-given rights. By the way, do I love the Constitution? Yes. But make no mistake, that Constitution didn't come from in. That document was drafted off of the document. So which do I honor? The Word of God. It just so happens to be that the Constitution aligns a little bit with it. So now I can defend freedom of speech. Why? Because God says in Psalm 81 verse 10, if I open my mouth, he'll fill it. And no weapon formed against me will prosper. A thousand will fall to my left, ten thousand to my right. I don't need a constitution to tell me that. Because trust me, the day will come when that constitution is toilet paper. What are you going to do then, church? You stand on the rock. You go where the head goes, which means you fight for family. You fight for unity. You fight for love. You fight for the least, the woman. But you start at home. You start in here. We have no right as the church to think we can liberate people out there if we can't do it in this room tonight. That's a game. So tonight, you got to get rid of stuff. Tonight, stuff that you are so nervous about talking about. I'm not saying you got to talk to me. The Lord will lay on your heart who to talk to. But you've got to drop luggage tonight. You got to cut bungee cords. So right now, I'm just going to ask you. I got to wrap up. I know, but and if I go over, I told you, throw a chair at me. Okay, I literally said that to them. Or food, because then I can catch and eat. <clears throat> and I can catch these hands. Look at these things. The lineman size hands. Tonight, you got to get lighter so you can go faster. J.H. Ranch, Bruce Johnson says the following. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So tonight, take the burden you've been carrying and let somebody who calls him king shoulder that thing with you. Cut that bungee cord for you where you can. Lay hands on you. Pray over you. Anoint you. Bless you. I don't care if we baptize people here tonight. I got some water. I don't know how we dunk you in here, but we'll get more. But you got it tonight. Come on. Moms, women, you want a warrior for a husband. You don't want a pushover. Girls, these young girls, you want, you want to marry a guy that is on fire, that has vision and dreams, that is audaciously, insanely, stupidly bold. 
that says God can. So why wouldn't we? You don't want a guy that you can... All right, we'll do it. God just kind of pinged me. I asked God one day, how did this happen to America? And he said, Yaku, it's Barbie. Barbie? He goes, yeah, I want you to look at Barbie. So I look at Barbie. I got two girls, two daughters. Praise Jesus, they don't like Barbie. (laughs) Praise Jesus, they don't like Barbie. Because in Barbie alone, Mattel has cultured all the women in this room that Ken is an accessory. You go watch every single Barbie show. Ken has no mind. Ken makes no decision. Ken follows Barbie like a poodle. He's an accessory. And Barbie has to be perfect. And Barbie has measurements. And American men, over 80% would pick a blonde over another because they're indoctrinated because Barbie is blonde. That's how you move a culture through a doll. What do you think Hollywood can do? Oh, that's right. There's not a single Disney movie that does not have sexual innuendo in it. You train the brain over time. You do it subtly and subliminally. You don't get a pastor to denounce Christ overnight. He fades slowly. He brings a little leaven in. They are way better than us transforming lives. This is why the Scripture says, gentle as a dove, wise as a serpent. Oh, we preach gentle as a dove all day long. Start preaching wise as a serpent. Start studying your enemy like we do in football. Tom Brady is not talented. Not enough to play in the NFL. He's not. He's skilled. Skill you can acquire. Talent is innate. Nobody studies more film than that guy. It's sure mathematics. It's pure. He lines up. He recognizes something that he has seen. He goes, I see you. It's it's, it's not arm strength. It's nothing. So what if the church learns from Tom Brady, who's a Scientologist and a numerologist and who knows what else else? What can we learn from Tom Brady? Wise as a serpent. Study the work of Satan. Not to honor him, to say, I want to know how you have attacked me in my life over and over and over again. Because I know you cannot be creative. God took that from you. I know you're cast down. So I know you have to just imitate So if I do the work and study how Satan has attacked my marriage, I should be able to highlight and identify certain things and get ahead of him and kill the giant. Versus always react. God created the laws of the universe. This is why an ungodly man can do really well on Wall Street. This is why if a farmer doesn't know the Lord, but he plants well, he tends to his crop... It's going to grow. People ask me, Yaku, why is Tom Cruise so successful? He's the head of the Scientology church. If God blesses his people, Tom is following laws and principles God put in place. He works harder than any other actor in Hollywood. And a worker is due his wages. It doesn't say a safe, Christian, baptized, Holy Spirit speaking, tongues of fire, believing worker is due his wages. Just a worker. But how much more can the on fire believer, Jesus freak, hallelujah, be blessed if we also put in the work? Not saved by work, but you got to get out there and move because it's impossible to please God without faith and faith without work is dead. So let's do some work, particularly in your sexuality. I'll close with this. Why sexuality? Why is child sex trafficking prevalent? Because it is sex. I asked you who who did not come out of a woman's womb. Raise your hand if you're not a sexual being. You can't. Now here's where the penny drops tonight. This is why this is the most dangerous drug on earth. Not meth. 
not heroin. I've pulled a 16-year-old out of a heroin lab in Boulder, Colorado with a needle in her arm, one o'clock in the morning. Heroin is not the most dangerous drug, nor is fentanyl. It's sex. Every other drug is external. Alcohol, external. Internal pain, external remedy. Internal pain, external. But the drug is external. It's external. You can't, over time, separate from that drug. But sex is internal. So you partake in sexual drug, porn, you are violating internally. It changes your wiring system. If they'll allow me to get in the attic of this building and they leave me alone with a pair of pliers for about four hours, they'll show up tomorrow morning, they'll turn the lights on and they won't go on. Why? Because I can rewire this building. I can make the toilet flush when they do the light switch. I can make the dishwasher go on when they start the vacuum cleaner. That's what happens, young girls, when you let a guy inside and mess with your sexual wiring system. He rewires things in your mind, in your brain that can't be just changed. So now you want to turn love on that's innocent and you can't. That switch has changed. You want to have a relationship with your father, but it's broken. You try. You know many people tell me, I try, I try, Yaku, I try to, to kill porn on my own. I try to have a relationship with my dad. Your wiring system, it's innate, has been completely compromised by a single act. It's the only drug that calcifies the brain. It's the only drug that kills neuropathways. It's the only drug that literally makes you see the world differently and think differently permanently. It's not a six-hour high off of heroin, a three-hour high off an opioid. No, a sexual high that you start to chase. How long does that high last? 30 seconds. So now you got a drug that's the most violent drug, and the high is only 30 seconds. What do you think that does? Higher frequency of use. Higher frequency of use, faster what? Habit forming. Faster habit forming, what? Higher demand. Higher demand for what? More intensity. So you go from soft porn images on your Instagram page to hardcore group sex gang rape in a flash. Why? The drug's high doesn't last. I spoke at 35 college campuses in 2019. There's 52 weeks in a year. You do the math, what that travel schedule looks like. Out of 35 college campuses, the most liberal, Brown University, UCLA, Pepperdine, Jesuits, Texas A&M, you know what my takeaway is? Over 60% of female college students today, porn. Why is the question? Because they've convinced our culture that love is a feeling. And if you don't make me feel good, you don't love me. And if I don't make you feel good, I don't love you. Now go look at your protests and your march. We've got to make everybody feel good. No, love disciplines, love corrects. So now a boyfriend tells a girlfriend, if you don't watch porn with me, you don't love me because it doesn't make me feel good. This is the conversation on college. It's called the hookup culture. Well, then it goes further. I want you to do for me what I see in the video. And when you cross that train stop, it's over. You cannot satisfy that. There's no woman in this room that can ever give her husband or her boyfriend what he sees in porn. Because you'd have to drug her out of her mind, bounce her off a wall, have a whole camera crew, do 56 takes, have production coordinators and stunt coordinators, all crazy, crazy. She cannot satisfy. And marriages are falling apart, not just because they're watching porn, but the husband wants what he sees and he's expecting that from his bride. And she can never satisfy, nor can he. So by partaking at it at its infancy, is choosing death. So tonight, you're either going to serve the culture of death or the culture of life. 
Yes, sex trafficking is real. Yes, politicians protect it. Yes, there's a lot of money. $32.5 billion in the U.S. That's bigger than Nike, Under Armour, and Adidas combined. To put it in perspective, it would be a Fortune 20 company if it was on the stock exchange. It's a monster. The border is a disaster. That's the only word for it. It's a disaster. There's 25,000 kids on their way that will come across our border in the next six months. 25,000 unaccompanied minors. And I told you in the beginning, there's nowhere for them to go. Last statistic before we're going to cut some bungee cords. We have 1,200 certified, trauma-informed safe houses, beds, not safe houses, beds in our 100 beds, total, total. You take four hotels in Tyler and they cover 1,200 beds. Total, 300 of the 1,200 beds are for minors. This is a fact. I work with 177 Dan Funk in the back, who's a hero, who can't do anything without man. Honestly, I'm just, I, sometimes I think I just represent him because he's just solid. 177 organizations in this country we work with, okay? There's 300 beds for minors. 300. You can't take a child that's sex trafficked to the shelter. They get raped in the shelter. Why, Yaka? Because the predator in the shelter sees the victim. Hurt people, hurt people. She can't even hide. A skilled predator sees her online. A skilled predator sees a 13-year-old that's vomiting their lifestyle online. I don't have a relationship with my father. I, I, I'm needy. I need attention. I love likes. And he just says, okay, I'll give you what you want. And he'll win her heart over. This is not kidnapping. This is coercing. This is defrauding. Most of these girls will tell you it's love until they're in too deep. So 300 bets total. So if we go out tonight, all of us together, and we could, and rescue 10 girls in Tyler, Texas, today I can tell you there's not a single bed in the country for them. Yeah, a bed at a foster family for a minute. I'm talking about 12 to 18 months, safe, secure space with professionals that can help them rebuild their lives in Christ. There's not a bed. One of my good friends, I'm looking for a bed for her daughter for the last month and a half. While we're looking, she's tried to kill herself twice. We found her two Thursdays ago hanging in her closet. She's 15. Her mom called me screaming, going, Yaku, she's not dead yet. What do I do? And she's hanging. After rescue. Most, most deaths in trafficking happens in the first 30 days after. It's sometimes better, to, as bad as it is, to leave them where they're at. Unless you have real help. Oh, is that not maybe the Christ model? Get them saved and then what? Disciple them. That reintegration program with the child that was trafficked takes... For that woman to stand on this stage... I, I, there's no words to explain to you what transformation has happened in her life. I don't know her, but I promise you. The healing of Jesus. You want to know if Jesus is real? There it is. Because that woman shouldn't be alive, number one. Should never be a mother. Should not have a, a husband, a marriage. Should not get on a stage. Should think she has no worth. Should take her own life. That's the norm. That is the work of Jesus Christ only. So the next time you hear, save all the children and we can keep them safe, 300 beds all taken. Now you can ask the question, well, why not more? Good question to ask. They made it very difficult, if not impossible, to run safe houses for children in this country by law. So tonight, please, for you, you've got to break bungee cords tonight. So just, just take a second and just, I'm going to pray if I, if I can. I'm going to pray 
And I'm going to ask God to show you areas in your life where maybe you've given a piece up. Sexually, you've given yourself up. Emotionally, morally, you've given yourself up. You've given your wife up. You've given up on your wife. You've given up on your dreams. Whatever that looks like, the peace that you've given up, I pray that tonight God shows you what that is and that He gives it back to you, and He wants to. He wants to restore it. So as I'm praying over you, I ask that you pray and ask Him, show me, show me. Go hunt. Find it. And then when I'm done... I don't know, Randy, you know, if you want to come up and play something, if there's a ministry team for anybody that wants to come up, let's go do surgery tonight. You can go to our website. It's not about self-promotion. I don't care, but you can learn about how to spot sex trafficking at Shared Together. Why Shared Together? We share the burden together to defend and protect our children. It's all of us. It takes a village. So let's pray and see if we, can, if we can do that. Let's have, if you're a father in the ministry here, would you come forward here? If you're a father in the ministry, just come forward right now. Dr. Paris, Chris, different ones. If you're on the council, please just come forward here. A father in the ministry. If you're a father, Larry Allen, Dean, others. You don't have to be old, but if you consider yourself a father in the ministry, Herb, Um, men in this crowd, if God has spoken to you and you need some prayers, I want you to come forward and have these guys pray for you while Yaku prays for us all. Yeah, okay? and, and guys, I promise you, that cord w- will pull you under any embarrassment that you think you're going to s- face for standing up and say to your wife, hey, babe, listen, I got to tell you something. And for the women, by the way, if your husband, I'm asking you, I can't beg you because I can only beg God, but I can ask you. If your husband comes to you and say, listen, babe, I, I, porn is in my life. You rally around that guy. You champion that guy. You walk it out with him. You do it together. You don't ostracize that guy. We'll lose him forever. And we're in the business of growing the army, not sending guys away. So please, please. Lord Father, we just thank you tonight. Holy Spirit, we invite you. This is your place. This is your microphone. These are your souls. And I ask you, Lord, to please, Father, show us, me, in my life, where did I give a piece up? A piece of my dreams, a piece of your will for me, a piece of my sexuality, a piece of my relationships, my belief system, my love. What have I given up, God? My community? Show us what we have given up, God. And I know, Jesus, Lord, you come to restore, to heal, to pull it out by the root and beating the love of Christ. We claim the cross over that situation now. And for those bold enough to come forward, Father, and and to come and let the body shoulder the burden with them. Jesus, give us the words to speak. We don't know. We have nothing. God, in this moment, we don't even have fish and loaves. We just have our word to you that we're yours. I pray that tonight you're going to restore women. You're going to restore virginity in women. You're going to restore belief systems. You're going to restore marriages. Father, for the husband that can face this demon, I pray that you give him an Esther that'll stand, that'll say, if I die, I die, but I'm going to bring truth. We just praise you as the healer and the redeemer the comforter but you're the lion and you're roaring you are roaring against every infirmity that's represented in this house and your angels are warring over this place i pray for fresh oil new wine skin new wine and ywam may this night reverberate in kona may ywam as a mission get a new mission may it get a new vision New resources, Father. Open up, Father. Give them the blueprints, the keys of David to the secrets of heaven, Lord. To the nations, to the nations, but also to this nation. So I pray, Father, that you stir hearts tonight, however small or big, that we leave tonight closer to you, more free. Because that's what your word says about you. That's your character. That's who you are. 
I can hold you accountable to be God tonight. And I know you don't have the right to leave. I praise you for the leadership here. In Jesus' name, amen.